The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the wonderful Wednesday, December 31st, New Year's Eve edition of Hour 2 of the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. I hope that you're off to a great start of your day, that you've got some great festivities planned for today, tomorrow, throughout the weekend. Hopefully you're not working on Friday like we are. Why is the market open on Friday? It needs a day, another day of rest, don't you think? This would be a nice, nice long weekend if we're off, but it's not. But we're going to be with you here for the next... Next hour, we'll be with you here all day today. Let's always remember here, especially on New Year's Eve, folks, that what is talked about is a dream. Now, for most people, that dream is nothing more than, you know, they say, hey, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. But most folks aren't resolute about it. Well, here's the deal. You know, what's, 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 what's talked about is a dream. So that's okay. Talk about it. But then what's envisioned, you got to really envision it. You got to, like Tom says, you got to step into it, right? So you step into it and that becomes exciting. But that's not enough. You see, because what planned, what is planned becomes possible. So if you're going to go out there and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get back into a good, healthy uh, state out here, maybe, and, you know, sometimes people will say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lose weight, believing that losing weight is the only element of becoming healthy. You know that's all BS. That is not the case out there. You can do a number of things each day to improve your health out there. Exercise is just one of them out there. But that's a beautiful thing because when you actually go ahead and you actually go ahead and you make a plan for it, which you should, you know, eating right, exercising, whatever it might be, that's pretty cool because it says it's possible. But here's the deal. When you sit down and you actually schedule something, you know this, it becomes real. And it's so real, I want to thank you for taking the uh, time out of your busy day, your schedule, to spend time with me. I am grateful for your presence here today. I am here to serve you. That means just give me a call at 877-927-6648. Internationally, you can reach out to us at 727-445-1044. That way, you and I, we can talk about what it is that you might see on the charts. Maybe something that I don't see. Probably is something that I don't see on the charts, but we can work through all the uh, details out there. Again, it is the uh, New Year's Eve edition. I want you to be safe. Uh, don't do anything silly, you know, drinking is a good thing. Just make sure you're not driving. Make sure you've got a designated driver who isn't drinking. It's not somebody who's drinking less. It's somebody who just simply isn't drinking out there. This is New Year's Eve. This is Tiger Financials Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow is up 41 points, trading out at 18,024. S&P up 2.5, trading out at 2,082. Composite up 14 at 47.92. Russell 2,000 up 4 points, trading out at 12.72. Uh, gold's back five bucks. Silver down thirty-one cents. Light sweet crude is off a dollar twenty as we speak right now. Moving to the upside here, it's the IBB. It's the iShares Nasdaq Biotech up about one and a half percent, up four dollars. Biogen up uh, three forty. A red Red Hill Biopharma up three forty. Uh, Tesla's up a couple of bucks. Uh, Tech Mira. Pharmaceuticals up two sixty. Uh, Juno Therapeutics up. Uh, Visa's up a buck sixty. Isis Pharmaceuticals, Amgen, each up over a dollar this morning. To the downside, oh, good Lord, Emerge Energy Services out here, EMES. What a what a nasty, nasty chart that. We looked at that yesterday. That thing is just uh, in the tank out here. Uh, Simerex Energy, XEC, off about two bucks uh, this morning. Carbo Ceramic, CRR, down a buck 80. That's off about 5%. Uh, you've got... Uh, Neuroderm down, uh, Neuroderm Limited, NDRM, is the uh, ticker symbol. That's off about 10% this morning. That's getting hammered. RSP Permian, Permian uh, is probably probably what it, the RSPP versus RSVP out there. That's uh, off about 4% down a buck 23. Get our call number 877-927-6648. Okay, so uh, where do we want to begin here? Let's begin. We did this during the uh, first hour 
Um, but we didn't do it with regard to the indices. Let's just check on what happened over the year. Let's go take a look at the quick year in review. We'll put up a yearly chart here for the uh, Dow. And as we do that, you can see, you know, a decent year. We're going to finish up towards its session highs. Nothing new there, right, as we uh, speak. Um, as far as if we just take a look at expansions of swing points, let's do that, see where we're at. Uh, the expansion of swing points that I'm looking at, again, on the annual chart, we're going from the 2007 high down to the low on 2009. That's a nice thing about being able to have a chart where we can just switch to an annual time frame. Here's what we know about the uh, Dow. It's trading out at 18,019 and the 1.618 expansion. It's above the 1.272. It says that it's got 18,974 written all over it. That looks like that is where the Dow is headed to. That's the annual chart uh, looking at the uh, Dow. Let's go take a look at the S&P 500. Of course, we went through this yesterday. You can catch the archives of my shows on Channel 9 and Channel 10 out there. And there we took a look at longer term charts. We took a look at uh, um, we took a look at uh, monthly charts, I believe. And those monthly charts, what we know about the uh, S and P is that the S and P has got a target price target of around the twenty three fifty level. The yearly chart shows the consolidation, shows the clear consolidation. That's here. Oh, come on, default default works for me. Here's your consolidation high. Here's your basically your consolidation low, which you can see is about 760 to 1552. So you've got what about an 18 800 point move at 800 to 1552, eight and five 2450. What uh, nine, 2350, eight and five is three. Yeah, I know I can get that. So 2350, that in essence becomes the target line for the S and P. Now, if we take a look at expansions of uh, swing points, that would be the 2007 high down. To the low in 2009. It's 1.618 expansion is 2138. That says at a minimum we ought to see 2138 get tagged out here. Maybe at 2138 that sets the hook, line, and sinker for a little bit of retracement uh, into the uh, late January, early February time frame for the S&P 500. But nonetheless, looks like uh, that would be the level that it likely is headed to. And with that only being what 20, 58 points away. I think uh, I think it can get that work done here in the uh, early part of the uh, year, but we'll see. We'll take things we'll take things one step at a time. That's the S and P. Let's look at the uh, composite out here. Nasdaq composite. She's trading out at forty seven ninety two as we speak right now. Uh, what we know about the composite, you know, that's trading back into the two thousand high out here. Uh, that says that that high is going to get tagged fifty one thirty two out there. Uh, this is strong like a bull. Maybe it's going to go ahead and take those highs out. Um, and uh, expansions, well, it's well above the expansions. I'll put it on here, but it's well above the 1.618 expansion. So really no reason for me to actually stick that out there. But but for those of you that were asking, I heard somebody out there asking. So there you go. I gave it to you. Now, let's go take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. Again, we're looking at an annual chart out here. Now, what the annual chart doesn't show that the um, that the uh, yearly chart shows is this is a this is a uh, consolidation pattern on its daily chart. It's about a thirteen month consolidation from about the ten forty level to the twelve hundred level. So you're looking at about one hundred and fifty, one hundred sixty point ish type move that says uh, that the and it's trading above the consolidation, which is twelve twelve out there and you're trading at 1216 so you've got the uh so russell 2000 is going to be the one that's going to give us the uh the biggest message if we take a look at the expansions of swings meaning the 2007 high down to the low here uh in 2009 you can see it's actually trading above the 1.618 expansion that price target would have been 1174 you're at 1216 so much like the uh, composite out there it's off to uh now in the case of the uh in the case of the uh Russell 2000, you know, here is the here's the other consolidation pattern that basically takes us up into the um, takes us up into the 1350 level. Uh, you're going from 370 to 856, so you've got about a 500 point move. Add 500 to 850, and what do you got? You got 1350. So there's where the 1350 comes from. And the consolidation patterns are beautiful, folks, because when you break a consolidation to the upside to the downside, your measured move means it should be equal to or greater than that consolidation. That's what we're looking at inside of the Russell 2000. Not a great stellar year, by the way. I mean, if you take a look at where it opened the year out, it opened up at 1160. You know, you're at 1217 uh, out here. So not a stellar year, but it's setting up for a stellar year in 2015. You know, you're looking at about a 150-point move inside of the a minimum of a 150-point move. Now, 
here's the thing. It gets a little tricky. I don't know that uh, punching your ticket and jumping on board right now is a thing to do. I think we're going to see one more push lower in the market before we then see the market take off into, uh, no, not May Day, you know, into July. Into July, maybe even beyond out there. So um, that that's a likely, very likely possibility. Um, so you don't necessarily. So seeing this come back in, this is my expectation. I shared this with you yesterday. My expectation is we're going to see the Russell 2000 pull back into the consolidation. And most people that look at these consolidation patterns are just simply going to jump on board and say it failed. Failed miserably. Failed to break out. I say it just simply failed on its first attempt to get up over it. But it's just been giving us a signal that it's going to go ahead and uh, do that out there. So you got the Russell 2000 that should eventually get up to that 1350 level. I expect we're going to see 1350 and that uh, 2350 uh, level inside the S&P this year. So in 2015. Uh, if we take a look at, um, so that's the four primary indices out here. Um, let's go take a look at uh, let's take a look at gold. Let's look at now to get off of the yearly charts. Let's go back to some other time frame, some daily charts out here inside of gold. What's the bullish case for gold? The bullish case for gold uh, is that it broke through that uh, short term uh, trend line. Short term, when I say going back to August of 2014, out here, and it broke through that yesterday. But what it has not done hasn't broken through that uh, TAS market profile resistance level of 1198. So you know, if, 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 bullish case is that since the lows out here on uh, November 7th, then the pattern. I, if you were li listen to, to any of my shows last week, I was looking for gold to uh, make a low basically today. December 31st. That's not going to happen. That pattern that I was looking for did not uh, come to fruition. That pattern was a Gartley buy. I was hoping that what we could do is I was hoping that we could just simply here on December 31st is give you a, a trade of the year, so to speak. And I was looking for Goldilocks to pull back to 1157, 1152, somewhere right around there. Did it do that? No, it hasn't done that. That was what I was looking at to be able to put into a, put it put in a bottom. It was going to be a Tiger um, Gartley buy pattern. So that hasn't happened. So now we got to look for new patterns out here. What are the new patterns? Well, new patterns just simply that it broke above a resistance level yesterday. Um, is that the um, you know? Does that mean that gold's moving higher? I say at this stage of the game, and we shared this yesterday. Gold priced in euros. Now I'm starting to sound like Dennis Gartman, and I don't want to start like I don't want to sound like that. But I do, do want to say this, um, and I didn't mean that in a derogatory fashion. I just meant it. What you want to do is you want to continue to watch gold priced in euros out there. I believe that the real breakout is not this uh, break that we're looking at here. It's not these trend lines. It's when gold gets above, closes above a thousand bucks per ounce priced in euros. Uh, that's when we see the real breakout occur inside of Goldilocks. You heard it here. You heard it here first at TFNN. Tom and I looked at that last week. I think it was a week ago today. And I believe we were on the same page. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side new to technical analysis this is the place to start and experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before experience the power of the roads momentum indicator each day available to subscribers of my newsletter service mastering probability i guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend mastering probability available on the home page of tfnn.com and folks live with passion Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. 
And he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 41 points. S&P is up three. Composites up 17. Russell 2000 up four and a half. You know, it's incumbent upon each of us to uh, start each day looking at whatever charts it is that we're going to uh, trade and to just start with a clean palette and be able to make sure that we look at both sides of the trade. Remember, if you're buying, somebody else is selling, and you've got to ask yourself the question, why are they selling, and then why are you buying? Make sure that you've got both sides of the trade figured out out there. Now, I see some chatter inside of the uh, den. Uh, take a look at the XLF, FAZ, which is a 300% FAS. I think FAZ is as long, FAS is the shorter, one or the other out there. Uh, but let's go take a look at the financial sector. We just uh, really covered this very briefly at the uh, end of the last hour. So we can take a look at this. We're going to start from a clean palette out here, that's, which is the way to really do it. So here's our, here's our clean chart of the uh, financial sector, of the XLF. In fact, Let's do this. Let's take a look at, um, let's come to a monthly chart out here uh, because this is probably the, well, how about that? So that's pretty cool. Okay, so here's a monthly chart for the XLF. Now, what we know about the monthly chart coming off of the lows back in March of 2009, that's going to be our A point of the A to B equals CD to the upside. The B point out here, that took place on uh, February, the month of February 2011. Makes a retracement. What kind of retracement? 55% retracement. We'll call that a 0.618 retracement. Gets above the one to one. Excuse me, gets above the one to one. One to one, folks, is $22.27. Now, as it hit that level, it actually did it with a key reversal session on a monthly basis. Let me pull this up here so you can take a look at it. I'm referring to this trading month of January in 2014, so a year ago. 
The month of 2014, the actual high that we saw the XLF get to is 2216. Its one-to-one price projection going all the way back to March of 2009 was uh, 2227. Got to like that. 2227 versus 2216. Are you kidding me? 11 cents. Now, what it does... During that uh, trading session, as it completes that, it forms a key reversal session out here. Now, key reversal sessions require three elements. They require you to be in an extended condition. One way to identify an extended condition is just simply have uh, be at the completion of a D point of an A to B equals CD pattern. Another way is simply just to take a look at the relative strength indicator. Well, I've just punched that up on my screen for you. And we, see, we can see coming into that level during the month of uh, December 2013, you were up at a reading of about 71.8. Anything above 70 basically says you're in what's considered a strong momentum to an overbought uh, type condition out there. Then, that's the first requirement. You've got to be in extended condition. Number two, what's required is the uh, candle session for the current candle. It's a monthly candle, by the way. Me, it has to exceed both the high and low. Interest session, intramonth in this case here, of the prior candle. Did it do that? Well, the low in December 2013 was 21 bucks. even, Stephen. The low in January was at $20.86. The high was exceeded, so we got number two. And number three, you just simply need to close by one penny, in this case here, because it's measured in pennies, to the downside. Well, it did more than that. actually formed a bearish engulfing candle. So you got everything at the completion of a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. But what happened? in the month of February for the financial, for the XLF, for the financial sector of the S&P 500. There was no foul throughout there. In fact, what it did was it basically erased the majority of that, uh, if you were to use a, a blended candle, which is a great technique to use out there, it just simply said the uh, bears lost the uh, battle out here. Now, they really lost the battle once you saw price close above the top of that monthly candle from January. Once we saw a close above 22.16, it said Bryce wanted to go up to the next level. Well, where's that next level? Fast forward to where we're at today. Voila, December 31st, coming into January. The price objective of the next level, taking it to the next level out there. What's we got to get that uh, Eagles song out there, right? Uh, in any event here, I'll just try to... Uh, I'll try to uh, Try to stay on track here. The next level inside the XLF price projection, 2535. The actual high that we've seen here during the month of December has been, at, drum roll, Johnny, 25, no, it's Doc, right? 2514 out there versus 2534, 20 cents, not too shabby. So we'll see. If, in fact, we get to see price close above this one, now there's no bearishness anywhere around here. You're making a 1 to 1.272. Look, folks, 40% of the time, you're going to do more than a 1 to 1A to B equal CD. doesn't mean that price stops here in this 2535 level. If it does get up above this area here, it says we've got 2926 uh, on in its uh, cards out here. That's with regard to the financial sector. That's the monthly chart. Now we come back to the daily. What's the message of the uh, daily? I'd have to say on the daily, let's go take a look at what it's doing right now. There are no reversal signals. In fact, on the daily, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and decorate it with Stevie's Roge Momentum trading signals. It's got Basil Chapman's, uh, what's the XL why it's got basil chapman wave counts out here it's got taz market profiles it's got the whole kit and caboodle so we'll be right back as soon as we have a little kit and caboodle we'll be right back folks Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. How would you feel if you had a powerful decision-making tool that has the ability to find high-probability trading opportunities across multiple time frames in equities, currencies, and futures? Search no more. Take advantage of the best trade with the Taz Profile Scanner. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to help them make the best and most accurate decisions. Scan over a 1,000 equities, currencies, and futures instruments for high-probability trading setups utilizing the Taz architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the Taz Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time, for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. Subscribers will also gain access to the December 9th workshop with John Logan. There's no obligation to pay anything. Get your 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, before the break, we were taking a look at kind of a detailed analysis of the XLF. I mean, why not? Let's uh, go continue on uh, with that. Now, we take a look at the XLF. We're going to take a look at the retracement levels. We're going to come off of this low out here from October the 15th. We're going to go from that low to the high that formed out here on December the 8th. Now, each of you, if you watch this on Tiger TV, I know you got your trusty rubber band like Steve-O has here. What I want you to do is I want you to take that rubber band and I want you to wrap it around your finger as as strong as as hard as you possibly can. I mean, as strong as you possibly can. Just keep wrapping it, you know, until that finger uh, tip starts to get all nice and red. You get all that blood in there, and then just simply back it off about thirty eight percent and let go. And when you let it go, what kind of energy do you have there? Pretty strong energy compared to what? Compared to wrapping it all the way around your finger and then backing it off sixty one point eight percent, sixty two percent out there. When you back that off and you let go, what kind of energy? Which one has more energy? The point three eight two retracement. Well, that's what we know about the market right now. That's what we know about the XLF. That says there is the potential that this is going to set up a huge A to B equals C D to the upside. Now, what needs to happen? Well, what needs to happen in order for that to occur is we need to see a close above the B point. The B point is December eighth. That December 8th, let's go take a look at the volume. Let's put that back up on our screen out here. That December 8th swing point high is 2507. Right now, we have not seen a close above that level. You're trading at 2504. The key is volume there is 42 million shares, 43 million shares. As prices come up into this level, it's been light volume. But we're in the holiday week. 
two-week period out here. So it really comes not Friday session, but it's really Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week out here. But the first time we hit it, December 23rd, 18 million shares. The very next uh, trading session on the 24th, 8 million shares. Light trading session, the half day. The next day after that, the 26th, 15 million shares. Then 17 million shares. Then yesterday, 16 million shares. Today, you're at about 3 million shares. We need 42 million, or it needs 42 million shares to get up over that level. If it gets up over now, some people will say, hey, you've got a failure because prices is closed back below and it sets that eye. I would argue to say you're still trading inside that swing point. What are you talking about? Until it breaks below 2478, you don't have any information other than it's trying to take out its highs. You certainly don't have any information that it has failed out there. Now, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, we can see that price has attained this level with less relative strength out there. That means that it is failing out there. Of course, this less relative strength is also a result here of we're in a holiday time period, holiday weeks out here. So you would expect something to have less strength out there. If it takes out that level, if then we've got an A to B equals C to the upside. And the measurement there on the A to B equals C to the upside, oops, I didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do was click on the uh, tab out here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So we're going to go mark our A point. going to be that October 15th uh, is going to be the low there, the, the uh, December 8th level. And then that point 382 retracement, December 16th, becomes our potential C point. A to B equals CD. Says what? That you can see price get up to about 2720 out here inside the XLF, maybe even higher if it takes out 2507 with volume. Does it mean that it's going to take it out with volume? No, we're just taking a look at really both sides of the trade. If I, take, I said we would take a look at both sides of the trade. What's the other side? side of that trade out here. The other side of that trade is if, in fact, we actually see the XLF close below 2478. Then we will have a rejection of that swing point. And then the key is going to be what happens inside the XLF as price gets down to the December 18th breakout session. And the low there is 2447 to the high of the prior day, which had 43 million shares of 2424. You're going to need to see more than 43 million shares as the XLF is moving to the downside if you're going to go ahead and take the short side of that trade. Right Right now, you basically have nothing that is bearish, in my opinion, with regard to what's going on inside the XLF. Then we go ahead, we take a look at the Rhodes Momentum trading signals out here. We take a look at the uh, TAS market profiles. We take a look at the uh, Chapman Wave count out here. Look, there's the potential, and I will say potential, inside the XLF that on this trading session here, if we come off of this low, that we uh, started our new account, that's the October 15th low, and we count all the way to the upside, we may be in our seventh wave of the upside. If I was going to look at something that has the potentiality, don't think it's a word, but it's at least a, a trading guy, a trading trading word here for, for pattern recognition, potentiality out there. Maybe it is even a word out here. We are potentially in that seventh wave. That says that the actual high that we want to monitor is that December 8th time period. It's the December 29th high out there. Because if we see one tick above that, it doesn't even have to close above it. If we see one tick above that, which is 2514 was that high on December 29th. So if you see a, a move of uh, 20 five fifteen out there but what i can guarantee it's no seventh wave out here and we have really only now gotten into maybe that third wave and it says that we would want to see some higher price out there so here's a complete look at the xlf yeah the two most bearish potential things or three is on a daily chart it's not above its task market profile resistance level that's a 2514 2515 one tick above that that says oh that's no more bear. That's no longer bearish because the seventh wave is out of the question. Doesn't exist. You're only now maybe into your third wave on a continuous basis. You're into the mean blue, the uh, nice uh, strong uptrend uh, candle. We've got the potential of a uh, large A to B equals C to the upside inside the XLF. I say, if you are trying to short the XLF, you got to be careful out there. Uh, now, maybe you are great at picking the uh, top tick out there. I'm not great at picking the top tick. But what I would also then suggest is if you're going to trade the XLF, I don't care what direction, then go over to the Spiders ETF. Go to uh, do a Google search because what you'll see, what's going to pop up is this right here. It updates each day. And each day it tells you what the weighting is inside of, the, uh, of any of the ETFs that you might trade. In this case here, the XLF, maybe you didn't know that what you were primarily investing in, long or short, you were going to be betting with or against Berkshire Hathaway. That's right. Berkshire Hathaway Class B stock is now the numero uno, the number one holding inside of the XLF. That's got 9%. Wells Fargo is 8.5%. So we're up to two of the, I think there's like 41 equities or... 
And it doesn't it doesn't show me the number here. That was that was kind of going off the top of my head, but I could be wrong out there. Nonetheless, Tua equities equals seventeen and a half percent. J.P. Morgan is another seven and a half percent. So now we're at, now we're at nine, eighteen, seventeen, twenty five. We're at uh, twenty six. Uh, Bank of America is six. So now we're at thirty two. Citigroup is another five. We're at thirty seven. Just those five: Citigroup, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Berkshire representing thirty five percent of what it is. So that means you really need to go over if you are trading the XLF and go see what patterns are going on inside of those. Look for signals there. In the case of Berkshire Hathaway, the BRK, the B shares out here, what we can see is it's above the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the upside. It too is running into, now this is no surprise here, it too is running into resistance of its uh, TAS market profile, 152.74. All it needs to do is clear that level and then it's off to the race. What we can also say about Berkshire Hathaway is on the trading session of December 18th, it was moving higher with accelerating volume. The swing point that it was dealing with from December 8th, that may sound familiar to you, that had 5.2 million shares. And as Berkshire was moving into it, it was with 7.9 million shares on December 18th. It had volume on the next day as well. It was an inside day out there. That really suggests that the trend is going to continue out here. So Berkshire Hathaway, 9% of the XLF, is not giving us any kind of reversal signal inside of the marketplace. Does that mean that the market doesn't start crashing down? Crashing is probably not a good word to use. doesn't start pulling back and moving down on uh, Friday or Monday or Tuesday. Anything can happen. All that you and I can do is try to assess the bullish and the bearish case inside of the XLF, or inside, in this case here, I'd have to say you have to start with Berkshire uh, Hathaway. So what am I missing here? What am I missing that could possibly be bearish about Berkshire Hathaway? Mm, I don't think anything. Let's go take a look at Wells Fargo as long as we're over here. WFC is the uh, ticker symbol. That's 8.5% of the XLF. Let's go see what patterns it has. So it had a, a swing point out here. It could be used for an A to B equals CD. That was a trading session of uh, December the 5th. And that had 14 million shares. As price came into it, it was with 21 million shares. Hey, slap me on side of the uh, face out here. 21 million shares coming into 15. Are you kidding me? You're coming into a swing point with volume. And it was taken out. We saw a close above it with, um, well, you saw it two days ago, December 29th. With 11 million shares, light and trading session. There was not a light and trading session on December 5th. I'm giving this the benefit of the doubt, volume wise, because of the seasonality out here, that this thing, uh, that uh, Wells Fargo has already uh, formed an a, to, a smaller A to B equals CD to the upside out there. Let's go take a look at the JP Morgan Chase out here, JPM. So, what I'm saying is if the market pulls back, it looks like the XLF probably is the one that's going to hold, is going to be one that's going to hold up pretty good out there. Probably not the spot to be looking at from the uh, short side. In the case, of J.P. Morgan, shoot, it's trading above its market profile out here, 62.65. So that's pretty good. It had a swing point here, a little doji candle, a little high wave candle. That was back on December 8th. 15 million shares. You've come into it with uh, 10, uh, 7 yesterday. Um, but that 10 from December 29th, that's really not too shabby out there. December 23rd, you were moving into it with 14 million shares. You know, J.P. Morgan not maybe as strong as Wells Fargo, but it is not exactly weak either. In fact, it's not weak at all. So that's your that's your full. Well, I wouldn't say full, but that's a pretty decent analysis for each of you when you take a look at the XLF and what you should do when you're trading those ETFs out there. Make sure you go take a look at what is going on inside of those. Now, back to the uh, markets out here. Let's go back and take a look at uh, some things that are moving. We've seen light sweet crude. So I saw something come across my uh, phone said that light sweet crude that inventory were what this says uh, u.s crude inventories fall by 1.8 million barrels and that didn't uh, appear to impact the uh, meaning uh, less supply out here that certainly didn't seem to impact the current uh, price of uh, light sweet crude out here you're trading at or towards its uh, session lows out here um, there is no bullish reversal sign i don't care what time frame it is that you use out here well i can't say any time frame but if we look at the 30 minute time frame out here here was the, uh, the you know, what's this? Uh, yeah, going into 10, 10 to 10.30. So I'm guessing, let me see, when did that come across my screen? 12 minutes ago. Um, well, we, here's what I can tell you. There's no pattern. There's no way to be equal CD to the upside or anything that is formed out here uh, inside of Light Sweet Crude. If anything, it's got a swing point from back here. Hold on a minute here. I've got something on my screen. i got to adjust off. There we go. Uh, it's got a swing point 
from about 3 o'clock in the morning yesterday. Only 4,000 contracts traded there, and you've pushed into it with uh, 9,000 contracts. I don't think that the move to the downside in light sweet crude is uh, over with as we uh, speak. Um, gold, gold back 14 bucks now. Okay. Hey, maybe we'll, maybe we will get that December 31st uh, number that I was looking for inside of a gold. So gold now picking up to the uh, downside, that red line that's on my screen out here, that's breaking back through that uh, trend line. So we know that gold here had made an A to B equal CD yesterday to the upside, right now doing a retracement, tracing right back into. So now here's, this is going to be interesting in gold. Now this is a 30-minute chart. We'll switch over to a 10-minute chart in a moment, but excuse me, here's what we do know. Gold broke out yesterday at the price level of 1182 and you're at 1186. The volume behind that move was 17,000 uh, contracts. That was uh, at uh, between 8 and 810. And we're moving back into it with light volume. So we'll see if those buyers are still hanging around inside gold. Now let me put this on Tommy's 10 minute chart out there. Let's go, let's go see what the master would be uh, looking at out here. So, on the 10 minute chart, we're going to see where that volume came in right here. So, gold is trading right now, right at that level. So, here's the benefit of going to the 10 minute chart versus that 30 minute chart that we're looking at. Now, let's pull this off to the side. So, where we saw gold break out with conviction, by the way, yesterday, 13,000 contracts, 12,900. Right now, you're pulling back into that breakout area of 3,900 bucks. So, here we're going to find out. Here's where the war. Here's where the battle is between the bulls and the uh, bears out here. So if this 1180, in 1186, this 1186.10 area ought to hold. If it fails, hey, maybe we get uh, Stevie and uh, Tommy's uh, Tiger Gartley uh, uh, buy pattern, but that's not uh, for gold's got to fall quite a bit further in order for that to happen. It probably doesn't happen here on uh, December 31st, but maybe it happens on Friday. Gold likes to do that on Friday. So our first hint, our first uh, our first hint as to what Goldilocks wants to do on this pullback is: can it hold 1186? It certainly doesn't have the volume. Yeah, volume has accelerated, but not anywhere near what we saw as yesterday's breakout out there. So we'll see if these uh, bulls are still in place out here. Those buyers that were in place yesterday at 820 um, are still out here inside of uh, Goldilocks. That's using a, a 10 minute chart out there. Uh, let's go take a look at, uh, so with gold trading uh, lower, let's go take a look at some of the equities, some of the gold mining equities, Rand Gold specifically. We'll start with out here, GOLD up 97 cents. We don't want to necessarily take a look at this on a 10-minute chart out here. Let's look at this back to the uh, daily time frame. Uh, the daily time frame, uh, still not doing a whole lot, uh, not doing a whole lot bullish, not doing a whole lot bearish out here. Uh, just simply continue. I was going to see, could this possibly form an island? I don't think so. 6990. Have we gotten up to 6990? Hi, 6952, 69. Let me see here. Low. 6990. Yeah, actually, you could. Okay. So this would be pretty cool, folks. I mean, the market's going to be closed tomorrow. It Maybe gold holds that low that we were taking a look at. Maybe gold somehow takes off to the upside on a Friday uh, early in the morning. But this is actually an island right here. What I mean by that is if you look at the trading session inside Rand Gold, the low of November 26th, was that a strategic? That, that, was to, that was to hook you, hook, line, and sinker to get you back to the last segment. We're going to take a look at this potential island reversal. Island bottom. It's not a reversal yet. What it could form, but it'll need a huge gap up. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFNN. We'll be right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 58, S&P is up 5, composite up uh, 28 uh, points as we speak right now. One year, one year I did the uh, ball drop in uh, New York City many, many years ago. Now, it was pretty cool. I think the name of the hotel was the Millennium, but it may not be the same Millennium Hotel that now is owned by... Um, Hilton, but it's possible. What I can tell you about it is that from the room that I had, we could actually see the ball. So, um, so that was that was a pretty cool thing. But what was really cool about it was the mere fact that uh, we were able to go down. Because uh, you know, everybody, you see all the barricades with uh, what that they've got when the police are standing on one side and everybody else is on the other side. Well, the position of that hotel allowed us to actually go downstairs. It was freezing cold. I mean, below freezing cold the year that I was there. And actually allowed us to uh, go downstairs. And we were on the side because of where the hotel is positioned. We were on the side where there wasn't anybody other than the police and, and people that were at the hotel. So we were in between the uh, in between those levels. And actually it was pretty cool to do it, you know, one time uh, in your life out there. So there are ways that you can do it because everybody says, hey, it's all those crowds out there. And it was really a cool thing. You know, we went to shows earlier, you know, had a nice dinner, came back. Uh, we're in the room watching the ball before it dropped, went downstairs, you know, on the side of the uh, 
barricades where the uh, police were. All we had to do was show our room key in order to be able to get to cut across there. And then, uh, boom, yeah, it was def- definitely Dick Clark uh, baby back then. When I did, it was pretty cool. Don't know that I really need to do it again, but it was cool to actually uh, do that. Okay, 2015 is going to be it's going to be a great year for the market. There's going to be some bumps along the way, and those bumps along the way are probably going to begin occurring sometime next week. Could be delayed by a bit, but we're going to see some bumps. Don't be scared about those bumps. Be looking to be able to buy that bump. Um, I cannot tell you whether it's going to be uh, a big bump right now. Tough to say. The, the Dow has given us a couple of weak signals out here, but we'll see along the way out here. Um, but to expect a bump between now, between the next 30 days. And then when you expect that, you know, anticipation is the ultimate power in life. You know, so that's why I want you to anticipate what it is that I'm sharing with you. So anticipate that and then be ready to go ahead and jump uh, all in to the uh, long side because that could be the significant low that takes the S&P up into that 2350. That could be the significant low that takes the Russell 2000 up into the 1350. That could be the significant low that takes a composite up and test the 2000 high out there. And as far as where's the Dow headed to, you know, she's just going to tag along with everything else out there. So what I was talking about uh, before, we went to the break. We're looking at Rand Gold. I'm not saying this pattern is going to happen out here. I'm saying that it could happen. And that could would be it could form this uh, nice big island bottom out here because we have a nice gap. A gap and a little breakaway. Volume was not that big of a deal. million shares to the downside, and that was back on November 28th. The bottom of that gap or the top of that gap is really how I should phrase that. 69.90 is the number. If at any point in time, between now and whenever, we see uh, Rand Gold, G-O-L-D, gap above 69.90, that means it's got to trade to 69.91 at least. Without getting to 69.90, you'll have a nice island bottom reversal. And I say it's going to happen, but if it does happen, that would be about the most bullish thing that you could find. There's a couple others out here. I think maybe Bear, does Bear Gold have that? Bear Gold has the same kind of pattern. Bear Gold would need to actually gap above 11.42, so 11.43 or higher out there inside of uh, Bear uh, Gold. So, folks, it's been a, a great 2014. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in each uh, morning out there. Thanks for all your cards and letters. Keep those emails coming. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman is up next. Uh, be safe out there. Uh, lots of drinking if you want. Just no driving. Not until you're back to being sober. So have a, a great uh, New Year's, folks. Look forward to seeing you bright and early 2014, January 2nd. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.